Hello everyone, welcome back to Hasta from Akar Wars channel. And just like I promised on the previous series that I just finished, titled How the Four Stroke Gasoline Engine Works, I'm going to explain today, and I'm actually going to be breaking it down into two, because this one right here is the older setup, the one that has four strokes, I'll explain to you what that means in a second. Uh, and in the more modern engines, they have an overhead cam design. So we're going to start with the older design, that way you can get an idea how all of this got started, then you'll be able to understand how eventually the design changed and it became more efficient. So I'm going to bring the camera up close and I'm going to show you what all these parts are and how they operate. In order to avoid drawing every single engine that was ever made, I decided to draw the most common one. This is a small block Chevy, very very common engine. It was built from the 1950s all the way to the mid 90s. So it's been around for a long, long time. It can be found in cars, trucks, SUVs, vans, you name it. And the majority of engines that have only one camshaft are going to have a similar setup. So this will enable you to understand your engine, regardless of what it is, whether it's Ford, Chrysler, it doesn't matter. It's going to be similar. So let's start from the top. We have a valve cover, cylinder head, intake manifold, engine block, camshaft sprocket, timing chain, camshaft sprocket. What you're seeing in this drawing is the front of the engine with the timing cover removed. That's why you're able to see this. Otherwise, you're going to see a cover. And when the cover is installed, you can see the harmonic balancer. You can see the water pump over here, water pump pulley, your belts, whether serpentine, V-belts, and whatnot. So this is the front, timing cover removed. Those are your parts. So now I'm going to move on to explaining how this whole thing operates. So I'm going to move the camera down so you can see this section. So now you have the view of the actual parts that are inside your engine, okay? Because this would be your engine block down here, and then your cylinder head would be up here. So we're going to start from the top again. You have your rocker arms, you have your valves, you have your push rods, you have your lifters, you have your camshaft, camshaft sprocket, timing chain, and crankshaft. The only thing that I didn't draw here, just because it would look too cluttered, was the connecting rod and the piston. The connecting rod is attached to the urinal right here of the crankshaft and as the crankshaft rotates, if you watch the previous video, you can see how it moves the connecting rod and the piston is directly attached to the connecting rod with the wrist pin, so it moves up and down to enable the air and fuel to enter the cylinder and compress it as it goes up. So let's start with the sprockets, okay? The camshaft sprocket is going to be twice the diameter of the crankshaft sprocket. What that means is the crankshaft is going to turn two revolutions to one revolution of the camshaft. And that's going to enable the perfect timing of the valves. On the camshaft, you're going to see lobes right here, the cam lobes. And those are the ones that are offset. Uh, like for instance, if you see this one, you see the, how this is lower than this one? That's because the offset part of this one is on the bottom and the offset part of this one is on the top and these camshaft lobes right here are the ones that determine the lift and the duration when it comes to the opening of the valves the lift is done by having a hill on the camshaft lobe the duration is making that hill longer so the hill of the camshaft lobe is going to push the hydraulic lifter up which in turn is going to push the push rod and the push rod moves the rocker arm as it tries to go up, since there's a stud here that the rocker arm is bolted to, over here in the cylinder head, it has nowhere to go, so it has to tilt. When it tilts, it pushes the valve down. And if you see here, I drew it in a way to where you could see how these are about the same height because they're closed. And when this went up, it pushed the valve down. And if you remember, the way it's set up, there's a cavity where the air and fuel come in through the cylinder head to fill the cylinders. And then when it goes back up, it's completely sealed just like these are. So with that in mind, it's very easy to understand that to make more horsepower, you want to have long duration, meaning leaving this valve open for the longest time possible, and you want to have higher lift, so you enable more air and fuel. So now that we know that we want to have a lot of lift and long duration, let's see what could be a factor uh, when it comes to creating lift. Here, I just didn't draw it earlier so it wouldn't look confusing, there's a spring, a valve spring. Okay, just like that. 
and then obviously they're all gonna have it. I'll just drill, I'm just gonna drill two, okay? Two springs. So you can only go so high on lift before you cause what they're called a coil bind. Which coil bind means that the coils touch each other, and if that happens, the coil spring would break, it would bend the push rod, you name it, it would create problems. So for engines that don't have any modifications, 50 thousandths of an inch tends to be the highest that you want to go before you start creating problems. Otherwise you have to install different springs, have a machine shop rework your head so you can do a different setup and a lot more lift. Certain things that can be done. But if your engine is stuck and you're trying to create more horsepower by adding a different camshaft, just try to stay within a 50 thousandths of an inch. Now let's go over the duration. Yes, obviously, you want to have the longest duration possible, right? However, when the duration gets too long, you're going to have both intake and exhaust valve open at the same time, and that's going to bleed the compression out. I'm sure you heard some of the hot rod vehicles that have this kind of cool sound, you know, this lumpy sound on the exhaust. What that is, is the duration is so long that those valves are open at the same time and it's giving it that sound. Because so why would those engines allow such a thing, right? To have both valves open knowing that they're bleeding off compression. So very easy to explain. The reason why is because even though at low RPMs that is counterproductive, yes you're losing compression because it's escaping out, because you have a valve that is open when it should be closed, but once you start going in the RPMs higher, let's say 3500, 4000 RPM, five or more, at that point the engine is spinning so fast, everything is happening so quickly that it's not even noticeable anymore. And that becomes an actual plus. So if you're thinking of adding horsepower to your engine and you heard somebody telling you, hey, let's just put a wild cam on it. That's what a wild cam means, right? It's got a longer duration and a higher lift. In order not to drag this video forever, I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, this topic alone could take the whole day if we start getting into details. And remember, what we're going to do now is, on the next video, I'm going to explain how the overhead camshaft design operates, which is completely different. This is just one camshaft that is in the center of the engine, operating every single valve through push rods. The other setup is entirely different, and we're going to go over it on the next video. So there you go. Now you understand how the single camshaft design operates. And stay tuned for the next video, which is going to be explaining how the overhead camshaft design works. Which, if you drive a vehicle that was made recently, it's very likely that it's going to have an overhead camshaft.